Oh my God, look what I have to show you today. It's that darn UFO. I have been working on it 30 minutes at a time. And I finally finished the last of the blocks and I'm getting ready to lay them out. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts and welcome to my monthly vlog. And stay to the end where I have a goodie from Make Modern Magazine. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. This is currently my oldest UFO. I unboxed it last year and I was so surprised that I wasn't even halfway done. I was barely a third the way done. But it's so fussy and fiddly, I just, it was hard to get back into it. I got out my 30 minute timer and tried to work on it when I could. And finally, this week, the blocks are done. So in my beginner zeal, I altered the pattern. And truly, I made it as complicated as I possibly could make it. Not one of these blocks will be the same. And it took me a good part of an afternoon to lay it out. And then another couple of hours to collect the, the blocks in such a way that I'll be able to sew them together and not mix them up. Wish me luck. This month I also had a chance to work on my new hexagon Millie Fiore. I finished, I believe it's 11A, and you can see I'm getting quite a stack. And I did cut out all the pieces for a, one of the big ones, rosette number four. Between the fabric poles for those rosettes and my video, Pick Fabrics Like a Pro, those fabric exercises, I had a ton of fabric to put away. And as I'm trying to cram all this fabric into my containers, I got the inspiration from my last video on ugly fabric. And if you missed either of those videos, I'm gonna put a link to them in the notes below. And in this mode of cleaning up, I also emptied a couple of bags of scrap and sorted the batting from the fabric, organized it into piles, and prepared some scrap sampler blocks. In my ugly fabric video, I showed a simple drawstring bag that you can make. And many subscribers asked me for the pattern. So here it is. The original bag was made with two fat quarters. But the bag I'm making today is a width of fabric strip, a little less than a half a yard, and it's folded on one side and the selvages are on the other. The key point is the right sides need to be facing out. We are sewing two quarter inch seams, and on one side we're going to stop two to three inches from the edge. Then we are going to trim that seam allowance to one eighth of an inch. Then we are going to press those seams to the side. I don't get a lot of chance to use my sewing stick, but this is one of them. It does help if you turn your iron on. And once you finish pressing your seams, you turn your bag inside out and press again. And then we sew again at a quarter of an inch. This is called a French seam. Now for the opening, I just double fold these edges over. You can use pins, you can use clips, but just make a seam around the opening. You don't have to, but you might want to put a box seam on the bottom. This is done by taking the bottom corner and just matching up the seam on the side with either the seam or the fold on the bottom. Align your ruler on that bottom fold mark and then mark a line with your ruler perpendicular. I'm making my line three inches from the corner. And then repeat on the other side. And then we fold over the top edge and we sew a quarter inch seam. I'm folding over my fabric about an inch and a half, but you can fold it over whatever you'd like to, depending on your drawstring. This is also a really good place to use one of your fancy sewing machine stitches. And as the drawstring, I'm just using these Moda ribbons that wrapped my fat quarter bundle. And I'm just feeding it through with a safety pin.
and I tie a knot to secure the end. Now this bag, I wrapped my youngest son's birthday gift last week. And before he even unwrapped it, he said, mom, can I have the bag? He gave me five stars. And I got a new toy this week. And I was so excited to start. I used this old crappy thread and I just made the situation worse and worse and worse until finally I went online, downloaded the user manual, ordered some needles, ordered some bobbins, and will hopefully be up and running in a couple of weeks. So I did get my next row for the sugar redo so along done. So we're halfway done now. If you still want to join in, there's plenty of time. Just go to Sugar Reduce channel and sign up. I think she still has kits left too. Now I've also finished two small projects. I have been moving these for 75 days every day from, from my sewing table to my bed and from my bed to my sewing table. And finally I got them done. The first one is leftover strips I had for my video eight at a time Mary's Triangles. And the other one was a Halloween bunting strip that I was using scrap batting for from my video, what to do with batting scraps. And if you've missed either of those videos, I'll put a link to them down in the notes below. But it is so good to have these off my plate. And having done these projects, now I have room in my schedule for my next quilt, the Meadowland quilt by Then Came June. The first time I saw this quilt on Instagram, it took my breath away. It was just so stunning. It looked so fresh and clean. I was immediately obsessed. It's great for advanced beginners. It comes in six different sizes and is fat quarter friendly. And I reached out to the designer, Megan Buchanan, and she is offering all my subscribers 20% off the pattern in May if you want to sew along with me. Just go to the shop on her website and put in the coupon code. So at the heart of the Meadowland quilt is the Meadowland block. And when the blocks are assembled into a quilt, five strong design elements appear. The first is the inner cross. The second is the square within the outer cross. The fourth is the outer cross, which when the blocks are assembled, combine to make a strong basket weave. At the intersection of the four corner squares, a fourth element appears in a larger square. And then surrounding that square is the fifth design element, a square on point. And it doesn't matter whether you use bright colors or soft colors or very dark colors. As long as you choose fabrics with good contrast between each other, you are going to get great results. The only caution I will raise is the value of the color in the corner four squares. It's my opinion that it, they should be one of the highest value fabrics in your quilt. You can see in this example, as the, those corner pieces darken in value, they take away from the other design elements and they become the main feature. Here's the same process with the brightly colored blocks. Here it is with a colored background side by side with its monochromatic version. As soon as it darkens to a certain point, it begins to be the star of the show and it takes away from the basket weave. Even if you're using darker colors, the results are the same. My next video is going to be all about flying geese. The when, the where, and the why to choose either the one at a time or the four at a time method. This month, I am a featured quilter in the next issue of Make Modern. And to all my subscribers, they are giving away a free copy. Just go to www.makemodern.com.au backslash just get it done. So that's my vlog for this month. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You might be asking about my son. Thank you for everybody that has sent me their thoughts and encouragement. It really does make a huge difference and I thank you very, very much. Cameron is going for his third treatment tomorrow. He's in a much better place this month than he was last month. So we are keeping our fingers crossed that all will be well. Anyways, I hope you are all safe and sound and isolate it carefully somewhere. All the links to all the videos I've referenced will be in the notes below. The coupon codes will be in the notes below. So 
if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button to be notified when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilt. And you can also find me on my website, JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.